Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, Secretary Street and uh, Ministers. Um, there's a number of issues I want to uh, look at. First of all, Secretary Street, when you were here just two weeks ago, mm. uh, in your evidence you said there were five or six examples where Scottish Government ministers, when they were abroad, raised issues of reserved competency. Uh, the Chair has written to you since then about that, but I wonder to help our inquiry, is there any further information you could put in the public domain about that because when Angus Robertson was here uh, he gave the impression that everything was done above board and he only ever responded to questions uh, about independence for example and basically said any um, allegation of inappropriate use of time by Scottish Government ministers uh, encroaching on reserved issues it was false. Could you substantiate what you said a couple of weeks ago? Um, right well I mean I I'm just sort of, one example. If you can, well, no, no, I can, no, no, I'll give you. I mean, I said five or six, and I did obviously think about that and expect that question. I expected from the chairman at the beginning. I think he probably was heading in that direction, but we didn't quite get there. But Perfect. and it's a fair question. I mean, I'm, I am reluctant to get into the details of specific discussions that have taken place, because you'll appreciate they can be in sensitive areas, with ministers and overseas government ministers and extra, etc. But um, to try and give as clear a picture as possible, I do have as I say, pre-prepared some answers um, to that. And I'm gonna, I, I will rattle through them so there can be no... You know, so the first one is uh, in Washington, Nicola Sturgeon, who may be a person of interest to this committee. Nicola Sturgeon was clear that she discussed the Constitution with the US Deputy Secretary of State, Wendy Sherman, during a visit to Washington, D.C. in 2022, when she tweeted that she had, and I quote, discussed the situation in Ukraine and the resulting refugee crisis, the Northern Ireland Protocol and the constitutional future of the United Kingdom during a meeting. In Paris, Angus Robertson, and this is, according, this is a Scottish Government Freedom of Information release, which I have with me, but you can, it's re, uh, re, easily uh, attainable. Uh, during a meeting with the French EU minister, Mr. Robertson discussed the EU Erasmus scheme and the UK Turing scheme, and he commented that there was no, I quote again, no alternative other than Scotland to be part of the EU again. Such criticism of the UK policies clearly undermines our relationship with international partners. Poland, Ivan McKee, Mr. McKee said at a trade event in Poland that was attended by a European Secretary of State in a Ministry of Economic Development and Technology that Brexit was a mistake. He looked forward to Scotland joining the EU as a full member in due course uh, and showing the rest of the UK the benefits of membership. And there are other examples, very briefly. Um, there was a, the, a minister responsible for EU issues where Mr Robertson described Brexit as a calamity, said it opposed additional challenges for Scotland, not least because Scotland was pro-EU. Um, at a St Andrew's Day reception in the European capital, Mr Robertson, in a European capital, should I say, Mr Robertson said that Scotland would rejoin the EU as an independent nation mm -hmm. and criticise the impact of the EU exit on student exchange programmes to Scotland. Mm -hmm. And finally, in, although I could, there are many others, as I say, in, an addition, in addition, in an FOI release at the end of November showed the Scottish Government offices overseas have been used to correspond with the EU on constitutional matters which are reserved. And again, that's, an, that's freedom of information, so you can, uh, you can get hold of that if you need to. So there's six examples, which is what I promised you last time. But I, but, and there are others that involve more sensitive discussions that were taking place. And as I say, what we want to do is to facilitate the Scottish Government on trade and culture and other things to go and talk to uh, other governments, but not to go and talk about matters that are reserved, like uh, the Constitution or foreign affairs. Or whether or not they want to have Trident at Faz Lane. These matters are reserved. Is it fair to say these examples that you shared with us today and the others that you can't for understandable sensitivity mm. uh, reasons uh, are the basis for uh, the work you have done with the Foreign Secretary yes. to um, you know, make it clear uh, to embassies and high commissions around yeah. the world that there is a place for uh, Scottish Government ministers and officials to go out and promote, as you say, trade in Scotland, but not these other issues that are clearly reserved to the UK Parliament? Yes, and it's also the case, and, and um, consuls of foreign countries have made this point to me directly, that they find it uncomfortable when the Scottish Government ministers raise separation, independence, or, 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 or other foreign affairs issues with constitutional foreign affairs with them, because they would no more want, if the, you know, the French consul, the Spanish consul, or ambassador would no more want um, to have to organize 
a, a meeting or expect to organize a meeting for, say, the separatists um, in Catalonia or Corsica uh, with, with UK government ministers, nor would they, ex they, they expect us to meet with these separatists from other countries. So it's, it's, they, they understand that it's, you know, we are one state, the United Kingdom, and it's, it, it puts them in, a, in an invidious position and it's not appreciated.